Hey yo, Mark here for Mark's Max Muscle. And today I'm going to be reviewing an IFBB event known as the Night of Champions. It was actually a pretty big event and produced an array of talented champions. It first began in 1978 and continues today, well, sort of. In 2005, it was renamed the New York Pro. So if you know how big of a show the New York Pro is, it should give you the impression of the prestige of the Night of Champions. So without further ado, let's begin. The inaugural Night of Champions in 1978 was packed full of talented bodybuilders. Just take a look at this lineup. You got Boyer Co., one of the all-time greats. Bill Grant here, who was never any slouch. There's Ed Corney, the master poser, of course. And take a look who it is, my favorite bodybuilder of all time, Robbie Robinson. Of course, Roy Callender here was always a favorite of mine. Next, you got Dennis Tenorino, not a huge fan of his. And last to be pictured here is Joe Nazario. Great set of abs on this guy. Nazario placed 7th, followed by Tenorino. Ed Corney placed 5th, Boyer Co. in 4th place. And Bill Grant actually surprised me with a 3rd place finish in this impressive field. It came down to Robinson and Callender. And I'll be honest with you, I'd be happy either way. But let's be honest, it was all that much sweeter to have my favorite bodybuilder, Robbie Robinson, crowned as the first ever Knight of Champions winner. So Roy Callender was close, but placed second to the greatest bodybuilder of all time. Well, in my opinion. Robbie Robinson would go on to also win the second Knight of Champions in 1979. In second that year was Danny Padilla. Wow, does Robinson ever look good here? This may be his best shape I think he ever brought to the stage. In 1980, Robinson would step down to second place as Chris Dickerson would take home the title. Dickerson would actually repeat history by also winning the 1981 Night of Champions, tying Robinson's record. So I noticed a little bit of a trend developing here at the Night of Champions. In 1978, Robinson wins and also that year placed second at the Olympia. 1980, Dickerson wins and places second at the Olympia. Dickerson would do the same thing in 81 by winning that year's Night of Champions and also placing second two years in a row at the Olympia. Seems this event is a real momentum builder for the Mr. Olympia event. Albert Beckles won the 1982 Night of Champions placing ahead of Brutal Bertile Fox. And on to 1983, and we see the future eight-time Mr. Olympia capture the Knight of Champions title, becoming the second man, along with Chris Dickerson, to capture the Knight of Champions and also go on to win the Olympia title as well. Lee Haney, one of the all-time greats. Al Beckles would make his way back to the winner circle, as he won his second Night of Champions in 1984. Beckles would make history in 1985 by winning his record third Night of Champions title. This record would never be surpassed. With that type of momentum, Beckles also actually placed second at that year's Mr. Olympia event, making it the fourth time that that's actually happened. 
Lee Labrada would become the first white man to win the Knight of Champions as he took the title home in 1986. And in 1987 would see Gary Stridham earn perhaps the biggest title in his career as he won that year's Knight of Champions title. A bodybuilder by the name of Phil Hill won the 1988 Knight of Champions and in the process, scored a victory over one Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson actually placed second that year. Phil Hill, one of the first big mass monsters of the sport. Quite a physique on this man. At the 1989 Night of Champions, Vince Taylor would hit the scene. And, of course, he took the title home that year. Vince Taylor, one of the all-time greats for sure. Mohamed Beneziza scored a rare victory over Dorian Yates, for the 1990 Knight of Champions title. Yates would get his chance the very next year, and he scored a Knight of Champions win, placing over Sonny Schmidt that year. Yates also becoming the third man in history to win the Knight of Champions and also go on to win the Mr. Olympia event. Kevin Lavroni secured himself a Knight of Champions win at the 1992 event. He also went on that year to play second at the Mr. Olympia, as did Dorian Yates the previous year, making that two more times that that has happened. Porter Cottrell, who placed second to Kevin Lavroni the year before, would earn a first place victory against Andreas Munzer at the 1993 event. Mike Francois would score a huge victory over Nasser El Sambadi for a 1994 Knight of Champions win. From one glance, and it may seem like Nasser is winning this one, but of course Mike Francois possessing one of the greatest backs in the history of bodybuilding. 95 would be Nasser's turn to score a victory at the Knight of Champions. And in doing so, he knocked off quite an impressive list of bodybuilders, including Vince Taylor, Chris Cormier, and yeah buddy, Ronnie Coleman just to name a few. At the 1996 Night of Champions, Flex Wheeler would become the 15th man in history to earn this prestigious prize. I must say, Flex looks outstanding in this picture. Chris Cormier would earn a well-deserved victory with a win at the 1997 event. Notice back then, a lot of these bodybuilders didn't have those unsightly, tumorous belly buttons that pretty much 90% of today's bodybuilders have. Anyway, the 1998 Night of Champions would be a sign of things to come, as King Ronnie, your yeah, buddy, Big Ronnie Coleman would score a victory over Kevin Lavroni, and in doing so, would become the first man in history to win the Olympia and the Knight of Champions all in one year. Paul Dillette would take home the title in 1999. Actually, Paul is uh, one of the taller of the winners, perhaps the tallest. Definitely one of the more massive, that's for sure. In 2000, Jay Cutler would become the fifth man in history to win the Knight of Champions and also go on to win the Olympia. But it wouldn't be for a few years, as Big King Ronnie had a stronghold on that Olympia title. Orville Burke, along with incredible back development, was able to take out some big names on his way to a 2001 Knight of Champions win. Perhaps one of the biggest wins in his career. In 2002, on his fourth attempt for this title, Marcus Rull would finally win the Knight of Champions. Big Marcus Rule sure is one big Hostetler for sure. At the 2003 event, Victor Martinez would take home the title, making him the second to last Knight of Champions winner in this historical event. In 2004, the IFBB would host the last ever Night of Champions event. This event featured former champion Nasser al Sambadi, as well as up-and-coming Branch Warren. 
But Melvin Anthony would earn the prestigious prize. He would be the last man in history to win the Knight of Champions title. Melvin Anthony, definitely a well-deserved champion for sure. Truly an aesthetic bodybuilder among mass monsters. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. From Robbie Robinson to Melvin Anthony, the Knight of Champions has produced some of the greatest bodybuilding legends the sport has to offer, and remains an integral part in the history of the IFBB. As of 2005, the Knight of Champions was renamed the New York Pro. So in some ways, its legacy will live on. Well, that about does it for this one. I'll be sure to finish this video with a feature devoted to the New York Pro, so keep a lookout for that one. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did. And that's it for now. This is Mark for Mark's Max Muscle.